Good morning, good morning my beloved scholars. Welcome back to the channel. This morning we're going to be looking at common fractions. So this is an introduction to the topic of fractions and there are many, many more subtopics within this broad topic of fractions. So if you have never done fractions before, this is where you should be because I'm going to introduce you to the concept of what a fraction is. Let's look at the definition. It says a fraction is a part of a whole. If we use a shape to represent one whole, we can divide that shape into equal parts called fractions. So a fraction is when you get one whole thing and you cut it up into equal parts. Each of those parts is a fraction of the whole. Now, this is how we write common fractions, simple fractions. We have the number at the top and the number at the bottom. This number here is called the denominator. Denominator. <laughs> the number at the top is the numerator. So the denominator tells how many parts the whole is divided into. How many equal parts the whole is divided into. The numerator tells how many parts we are shading from the whole or how many parts are being taken from the whole. So how many parts are shaded or taken? So the denominator is at the bottom of the line. The numerator is at the top. The denominator tells us how many parts, how many equal parts we're going to split up the whole thing into. If it's a cake, how many slices you're going to cut it into? Or if it's a pizza, how many slices you're cutting the pizza into? or any shape at all. But the important thing is each, each um, part that you're cutting it into must be equal to the next. So we're talking about equal parts. The numerator will tell you how many parts you're going to remove or how many parts you're identifying as separate from the others. One third tells us that we have a whole thing, we're cutting it into three equal parts, and we're going to shade one part or remove one part. Now I'm going to write some very common fractions that you should know the names of, you should know these ones by heart. And then we're going to also do some others and split it up and shade it to see exactly what we mean. So you should know any number, any whole number can actually be written as a fraction, right? So even if we're talking about two, we can write it as a fraction as two over one, which is two wholes. All right, just bear that in mind. So just bear it in mind. This is two wholes. Alright, so let's look at the common fraction. So we have, this fraction is called a quarter. Or one quarter. Some persons prefer to say one quarter. So that means we have a whole thing and we're going to cut it up into four equal parts. Try and make them look equal. And we're going to remove or shade one of the parts. That's what we mean by one quarter or a quarter. Here is another common one, a half. Sorry. A half, that's a two. So it's a half. Some persons say one half. That means we have a whole. 
and we're cutting it into two equal parts, whether we're cutting it vertically or we could cut it horizontally or we could cut it diagonally. So we could cut it like this. This is vertically, horizontally, and let's do the diagonal. We could put the diagonal there. All of these are one half, and we could have done the same thing for the quarter, just to show you, right? Just to show you, we could have gone diagonally for the quarter. Well, if it, we'd have to make it a square for it to be equal parts, right? Or we could have gone vertically all right so and we would shade just one part so these are different ways of representing so I wanted to show you that Going to erase this one here. because if it's a rectangle and we use the diagonal, actually the parts will not be equal, right? So I'm going to remove that rectangle. So we have to make sure that the parts are equal for it for it to be a fraction. So for the half, we could split the rectangle vertically, horizontally, diagonally and we would shade one part. So any one of the parts, because they are equal, okay, so one third is another common fraction, a third or one third. Again, we could, be, let's use a circle this time because you can use any shape, right? You just have to try to make the parts equal. That's the important thing. Make them equal. So we're cutting it into three equal parts and we're shading one of the parts. So whichever shape you use, you have to make sure that whichever way you divide it, the parts are equal. So for example, I had a rectangle here, I was demonstrating the diagonal, but if you cut a rectangle diagonally, you don't get equal parts, right? So that's why I erased that one. Which other shape could we use to represent one third? So we have had rectangles, squares, um, circles. Could we use a triangle and try and get equal parts? It's difficult. It's difficult to get three equal parts with a triangle. Pretty difficult, but it can be done. Depending on the type of triangle that you're used to. Alright, but that's the basic idea, right? You want whichever shape you choose, you must be able to cut it into equal parts. That the, the, the denominator tells you how many equal parts, and then the numerator will tell you how many of those parts you're going to shade or you're going to remove. So we have a quarter, a half, one third. Three quarters is another. Three quarters. So that means we have a shape, we have one hole and we're cutting it into four equal parts. Four equal parts. Do they look equal? I was trying to get them to look equal, right? But just have that in your mind, they're supposed to be equal. And we're going to shade three of them. So that's one. Two, three, 
three parts. Okay, so three parts shaded out of the four. All right, but let's say we had a fraction five, six, or we had the fraction two, fifth. It's the same principle. So we divide the shape into six equal parts. Let's try the circle. Six equal parts, and we're going to shade five of those parts. So that's one, two, three, four, Five. That's five six. Five six. And this is two fifth. So that means we're dividing the whole thing into five equal parts. And we're shading two of the parts. So let's shade that one and that one. Okay. And these are common fractions, right? We have other kinds of fractions. We have mixed numbers, in which case you would represent the whole as separate from the fractional part. So, for example, if I had one and a half, I will represent the one whole, that's the one whole, because this is a whole number, the one whole, and then I would have to draw another hole and then shade half of that hole. So it's one whole and a half of another hole. That's the idea there with the mixed number. If we had two and two thirds, that means we would need to have two holes and then we cut the other hole into thirds and shade two out of it. So we have, for the two whole numbers, we have the two holes, the whole of the shape, the whole of the other shape, and then two-thirds of the next one. So that is how we would represent mixed numbers using our shapes and dividing them up. Remember, it's very important that you try your best to make the shapes, to divide them up equally. We can't always do it perfectly, but try to make them look as even, as equal as possible. Because that's the concept of fractions, we're dividing it up into equal parts. Alright, let's do one more mixed number. So let's say we had 3 and 1 eighth. So what would that mean? 3 holes, 3 whole things, and then 1 eighth of another thing. So let's use circles. So we would have 3 full circles, and then the, the, third, the fourth circle, we divide it into eights, eight equal parts. So we shade the three whole, and then just one part out of that, the fourth whole. So we're saying, this is going up to become four holes. But so far we only have one part out of the full eight parts that we would need because each number over itself is one whole. Just as we can represent whole numbers, for example, two is two over one, that means there are two, two complete holes 
or, um, or this is represent one hole, we have two complete holes. We can also represent one as any number over itself. Because if you take one hole, divide it into eight parts, you divide it into eight parts and then you're going to shade all of the eight, that simply means that's the whole, right? And this goes for any whole number. One can be expressed as any whole number over itself. If we take three, if we divide something into three parts, and then we're going to shade all three parts. So, we divide it into three equal parts. And we're going to shade all three of the parts. It simply means we're using up the whole thing. And this goes for whether we're going to say 5 over 5, 20 over 20, 100 over 100. These will always give you one whole. Okay, so bear that in mind. Alright, so that's it for introduction to common fractions. There are other types of fractions which you will be introduced to as you go along. I hope that you understand now the concept of what we mean by a fraction. A fraction is a part of a whole. We have to make sure we divide the whole into equal parts as much as we can. If we use a shape to represent one whole, we can divide that shape into equal parts called fractions. And the number at the bottom, the denominator, tells us how many equal parts we're dividing the fraction into. The number at the top, the numerator, tells us how many parts we are shading or removing. I hope that you have learned from this video. If you have, please leave a comment to say thank you, miss. Please share the video so that other students can benefit from the information. And if you have not subscribed to the channel, please do so. Let me know also if there are any topics that you'd like me to cover in the videos. If I have not done so already, I'll certainly do that for you. So just drop a word in the comments and let me know which topics you'd like me to do. I'll see you in the next video. Take care of yourselves, my beloved scholars.